Okay, now that we've seen how to spot inverses and what their use might be, let's learn how to find the inverse of a given matrix. The good news is you already know how to do this. You already have the tools. So we're going to look at finding those inverses and then a reminder of how to use them. So here is how we find the inverse of a matrix. We write down the matrix whose inverse we want and then we look at the right sized identity matrix and just stick it to the right of the matrix we already have. Okay, so for example, if A is 3 by 3, then we would put the 3 by 3 identity matrix uh, glued to the right of the matrix A. Then we're going to start Gaussian elimination. The goal will be to take that left hand matrix A and reduce it to the identity matrix and carry along the numbers on the right hand side and whatever happens to them happens to them during that elimination process. When you're done reducing the left half of this double wide matrix to the identity matrix, what was originally the identity matrix on the right hand side will have evolved into the inverse. So here's what that means. We're going to look for the inverse of this matrix. So we're just going to append the 3 by 3 identity matrix to its right. Now we have a double wide matrix. We're going to focus on that left half and start doing Gaussian elim elimination to reduce it to the identity matrix on the left half. The numbers on the right half will be changing and they will be changing into the inverse. It's like magic. So we have to start making decisions on row operations to reduce the left half of that matrix to the identity matrix. So knowing that I want the top left hand one to take out the two right below it, how about two row ones minus row two and replace the result in row two to produce a zero where that two currently sits and then just a direct subtraction of row one minus row three will put a zero in that lower left hand spot where a one currently sits and whatever happens to the rest of the numbers happens. But there we go, that's the result of those two row operations. And now let's move to the second column. We'll use the one in the middle of the second column to take out the one above it and the one below it. And so we'll just do some row subtraction and replace row one and row three. Again, pause this and slow down to watch those row operations if you need to. We're going to move to the third column. First, we're going to multiply it across by negative one to produce a positive one in that spot in the third row third column and then we'll use that one in the third row third column to take out the negative three and the two above it with properly chosen row operations and now finally we've reduced the left hand side to the identity matrix the right hand side has been evolving along the way that right half is now the inverse of the original matrix and that's it that's how you can find the inverse of a matrix there are other techniques but we already know the tools here so we'll stick with it now, here's another example of solving a system of equations with matrix inverses. In the last set of slides, we did solve a problem like this, but we were given the inverse of the matrix. Here, we'd have to find it ourselves. So to solve this system, we break out the coefficient matrix, and then we append the 3 by 3 identity matrix to the right. And then we start doing row operations to reduce the left-hand side into the identity matrix. Now here is where you can pause this and try it yourself. I'm not going to go through the steps because you should be able to decide what they are. But after a set of row operations, six at most, we will end up with this. The left half is now the identity matrix. The right half has been evolving along the way. That right half is now the inverse of the original coefficient matrix. And so that system whose matrix form was originally AX equals B can now be solved by X equals A inverse B. And there is the result. X is 53, Y is 35, Z is 7.